everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Diane, but you can call me Dee. If you're new here, thanks for tuning in. If you're not new here, thanks for coming back. Today I'm going to be showing you how I use cream products because I did an Instagram poll and a couple of my followers told me that they are a little bit hesitant when it comes to cream products. You don't really know how to use them, you don't really know how to work with them, um, they seem to move and slip and slide everywhere. So I'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks on how to achieve this glass skin look, on how to apply, blend, and make the longevity perform as you see fit. Uh, my skin is going through a little bit of a rough patch still. I went up north this past weekend and I got devoured by mosquitoes and deer flies and black flies. So some of it is acne, some of it is mosquito bites, some of it is allergic reaction. Um, pretty much my face is a mess. What else is new? So if you want to learn how to get this really fun, summery, warm-toned eye along with this really soft, sheen, lit from within, makeup no makeup kind of skin, please keep watching and I will happily show you how. Okay, so while those patches are going to do their wonderful magic for me, I'm going to start with my brows. Uh, I'm going to use a different technique. My coworker Joanie showed this to me, and I really like how she does her brows. They look really fluffy and really defined. I'm going to try to imitate her technique. I'm going to go in with my brow pencil. As always, I'm using precisely my brow from Benefit. This is the number three. And I'm actually going to brush my brow hairs down just to really get a sense of where I'm missing hair, but also what my actual natural shape is. She really lined the top half just to get that nice shape. So again, it's going to look a little bit harsh and crazy in the beginning, but then it's all going to come together. And as always, just using light, quick strokes. So you have something like this. You're going to go back in with your spoolie and now brush the hair up. So I'm just going in with my NARS Creamy Rating Concealer. I've been using this for years. And this is actually a precision lip brush from H&M. It was on liquidation for $2. And it's phenomenal for cutting the crease, but also for um, applying your concealer to cut out your brows. So I'm actually going to use the concealer as a guide for where I'm going to place my other products. So I'm actually going to use this a lot lower than my actual brow. I'm not really carving it, I'm actually sculpting the supposed shape. This makes no sense, I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna do. So, I'm starting here in the front like always. But you can see that I went a lot lower than my actual natural arch. So this is gonna serve as a guide So that I know where to put the actual product because if I do it on bare skin I'm just gonna follow my natural shape and that's not what I want to do so using my finger to lightly blend that out but not too much because again I want that guide Just gonna go ahead and do it on the other side so you should have something like this again you're still looking a little crazy so what I'm gonna do is go in with my Stila Stay All Day Waterproof Brow Color in Medium. This is a pen. It does look like hair when you do the little flick on your skin. It's waterproof, so it's great for summer makeup or if you're just like a naturally sweaty person like I am. Um, without further ado, I'm just going to start doing some flicks to really give that nice textured brow look. So for today's look, I'm just going to use one of my favorites. This is the Urban Decay Naked Heat Palette. I love this palette. Beautiful tones that look good on pretty much everybody. Um, I'm going to go in with Low Blow. I'm just going to start buffing this into my crease. Next, I'm going to go in with Cayenne. It's a little bit of a deeper tone, still a matte. Still the same brush. And I'm just going to throw this guy really in the outer corner. 
And again, just mishmash all of this together. Gonna go in with my Smashbox Definer Brush. I have had this guy forever, I love it. Um, very good for highlighting underneath the brow bone and on the inner corner. And I'm just gonna take some Kitten from Stila. This is very well loved, this is like my third one. And I'm going to use this just underneath the brow. And this is where that line of concealer comes in really handy. And I'm going to bring that highlight down. So by bringing the other two colors in the crease up and bringing the highlight down, again, you're creating this really nice crisscross method. It's giving you that beautiful gradient fade and it looks very soft and blended, but still clean and defined. And you can go back with your brush again. There's nothing left on here. It's just whatever I used. And I'm just going to windshield wiper motion everything together um i'm feeling feisty i'm gonna go in with on fuego really rich kind of cranberry plummy tones same thing same brush same placement outer corner and now i think i'm gonna go in with am i I think I'm gonna go in with Lumber. It's a little bit of a shimmery shade, more like peachy corally. I'm gonna take a different clean blending brush. This is Sigma. Can't tell which one because the label has been rubbed off. I've had this for quite a bit of time. Um, just any fluffy, clean blending brush. I'm just gonna take a microscopic amount of that shadow and I'm going to pull this in an upwards motion. So I'm not actually like pulling and tugging on my skin. I'm using a very, very light, delicate touch. The technique is really just softly diffusing those lines. So that shimmer is going to transition from all those matte shades into our shimmery brow tone. Just get a little bit more depth, a little bit more dimension. And again, helping with that nice blended fade. So now comes the fun part. I'm going to use the same brush that I used earlier underneath my eyebrows to carve out my lid. So again, took a little bit more concealer, just ensuring that it's a nice thin but even layer on the brush. Small patting motions. I'm going to apply this on my inner corner. You don't have to be too precise because we're actually going to look up. We're going to look to the side, and to the other side. We're going to blink a couple of times, and you can see that it transfers. I actually don't have enough product. So I'm going to add a little bit more. And by doing so, when you are blinking throughout the day, your shadow is going to transfer. But because you already apply that shadow in a strategic manner, it's not going to move too much and it's not going to kind of get muddy with the other colors. It's going to stay crisp and clean and precise, which is the whole point of a cut crease. I'm just going in with my finger and I'm patting it out. And I'm patting it in an outward motion. Now I'm gonna go in with a really flat brush. This one is from MAC, it's the 239S. Any flat brush will do. You want something that's really gonna pack on that pigment. So I'm going to take Scorched, really beautiful color. I did three passes, pretty good color payoff. gonna squirt it with a little water this one is the hydrating face mist h2 rose from Carez. love this stuff. right here you can see that that line gets a little crazy between the concealer and the existing eyeshadows i'm just going to pat over that line just to kind of diffuse that intensity oh my god this color mm. just like so again it doesn't have to be too crazy and precise we're gonna come back to it so next, I'm going to be using one of my favorite products ever. These are the Glitter and Glows from Stila. I love their formula. They don't crack, they don't move, they don't irritate my sensitive eyes. They're pretty good for not staining my eyelid either. You can do them really opaque with the applicator. You can diffuse it with your finger. Um, there's like a million ways to use these as an eyeliner, as an eyeshadow, as a highlight. Um, they're really, really beautiful. I'll be taking the shade Dollish. It's this really 
pretty peachy kind of coral magical summer shade and I'm just gonna use this straight from the applicator on my lid so I'm just painting this on top of that concealer working slowly taking my time and just ever so lightly overlapping with that eyeshadow we just previously applied I'm gonna go back in with my brush there's no extra product on here. I'm just using what's left over and I'm just going to lightly tap it over that edge of the glitter so I have not had enough glitter so I'm just going to go for it today I'm going to be using Junk Show this is the heavy metal glitter liner from Urban Decay also another favorite product of mine um, the formula is not exactly the same but it doesn't mean it's better or worse it just means that it's different really awesome teeny weeny tiny liquid liner brush so this is very precise so when you're cutting the crease and you want to define something if you want to put this on top of your liquid eyeliner to give it a little pizzazz um, even to go underneath the lash line very easy to just pop it underneath your lashes so I'm gonna use this just to define that inner portion so I'm gonna tilt my head back that is just like so it's just a teeny weeny touch of color enough to stand out but it still goes with the tones of the look and again this step is completely optional i'm just dramatic um, i also like this tip that if you kind of went over um, with your concealer and it got a little bit messy it's not as crisp and clean as you'd like it to be using this little hack will give the illusion of precision when really you're just fixing your mistakes so good little tip and trick to implement into your routine when you're still learning with cut creases because um they're hard like this eye is great this eye what the hell's going on but you know shit happens so now we're getting to the really nitty-gritty of the video i'm going to be showing you how i do my glass skin and how i use my cream products now here's the thing as you can tell my skin is not perfect i'm having still remnants of a breakout of an allergic reaction and it's a big pain in the butt to cover because it feels heavy and cakey it gets disgusting throughout the day and i just don't like feeling like i'm hiding something because i'm insecure about my acne or my discoloration so glass skin normally is like on models with already gorgeous bases and then you just add a little bit of a wet highlight and it's like she's laid my life but how do you do the glass skin if you already have problematic skin you know what i mean so I'm going to be showing you some of the tips and tricks and techniques that I use and you can take from it as you see fit. I'm going to be going in with the Dermablend Insta Grip Jelly Primer 3-in-1 Multitasking Primer. So it comes like this. You kind of twist it open, which is nice if you're traveling. It's not going to make a mess. And I'm going to take one full pump. You're actually going to be applying this in an upward motion and you're not rubbing it in. You're really like pushing it in. Now that that is nice and tacky, tacky smooth, it's really weird, you gotta try it. Uh, I'm gonna go in with my color corrector as always, cause Abish is tired. This one is the Urban Decay Naked Skin in Peach. I'm just gonna pop that sucker right in there, just to really help neutralize the darkest part of my dark circles. My Beauty Blender is already clean and wet, and I'm gonna go for it. So for this foundation look, I'm gonna be mixing two. Um, you know I'm a mixer, I'm sorry, not sorry. This is the Healthy Mix Serum from Bourgeois. One pump of that guy. If my skin is cooperating and it's my day off, I can wear this alone. If my skin is not cooperating, I'm not having a day off, I'm going to work. I'm gonna take my Naked Skin from Urban Decay so sad this foundation is being discontinued what is my life coming to uh, so good and I'm just gonna take my Stila foundation brush and I'm just gonna kind of mix the two together and I'm just going to start dabbing this on my face Alrighty, so once your foundation has been blended out, again, you can see that it looks like skin, but I still have a couple of imperfections that are just peeking through. So instead of doing a really crazy, heavy, full coverage foundation absolutely everywhere and masking my skin, I'm gonna spot conceal. This is really, really helpful. 
just gonna take a clean painter's brush. This is like from a craft store, it's like $2. And I'm taking my NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer in Vanilla. And I'm pretty much going to spot conceal with this guy. I'm just kind of going around, checking where I need a little bit more help. I'm just gonna let that sit for a little second as well. I want it to melt into my skin. It is six million degrees in my apartment because I don't have air conditioning. Plus it's garbage day, so I closed my window a little bit so you guys can hear me better and I'm melting. So I'm gonna drink some hot coffee because obviously it's gonna make everything better, right? Okay, she ready, she ready. Not swiping again, very important that you're not swiping, you're bouncing. If you're swiping, you're moving the product. By bouncing, you're layering your product. So that's what's going to get you your coverage, but it's going to diffuse those lines. So you don't have like a random spot, like thick concealer. It just melts into your base, which is underneath the concealer. Did you think we were done with concealer? No, we're not done with concealer. <laughs> I'm gonna be taking my Creamy Radiant Concealer from NARS. Uh, I take two shades. I use vanilla, but I also use Chantilly. Vanilla is perfect for me in the summer. It's very natural. Chantilly is my winter color, but I will take a teeny amount in the summertime, and I'll still dab it just a tiny bit right in like the darkest spot. Just, just a tiny bit here. And it really helps brighten everything. That's why you do this one alone and it looks really crazy. Um, but the vanilla, as much as it is natural, is not brightening enough for me. So again, I like to mix. You're not obligated to. I'm just dramatic. So next I'm going to be going in with my bronzer and my contour. Both of these are in a stick format. This is the Hula Quickie Contour Stick from Benefit. I freaking love this product. So good. Um, sometimes you get a really bad batch and the stick falls out. So just be careful when you're opening it that you're opening it the right side up. Um, it's creamy. It blends like a dream. It doesn't get patchy throughout the day. doesn't make me look like an Oompa Loompa. Um, I just, I really like this product quite a bit. So I'm going to do Fishy Face. going to apply it where I naturally get <clears throat> tanned and then I'm going to go in with my Anastasia Beverly Hills um, shadow stick foundation in the color contour very awesome cool toned contour shade and I'm just going to bring this bad boy on the sides of my nose come so and again, using my beauty blender. I'm not washing this in between. I'm still using the same beauty blender, by the way. I'm just gonna start patting this into place. And I'm just blending in an upward motion or on a direct side motion, but I'm never bringing it down. If I bring it down, it's gonna start looking a little dirty, a little muddy. And even this look is meant to look natural. Um, I still want it to show up. I still want to define my contours of my face. Just working that into the jawline. And then just the sides of my nose, I'm gonna blend that contour out. And the good thing about cream products too is that if you did apply too much or you did blend it too low or too high or whatever the case may be, you can always just go back with a little bit of foundation on a brush on a beauty blender and just blend it on top and it's just going to diffuse and soften everything. But I have a plethora of items that I like to use. So sometimes I'll use my Chanel blush stick. This is a really awesome peachy kind of apricot color. It looks good on everybody. This one is number 24. Um, I love Liquid Orgasm from NARS. Again, this is like a peachy, pinky tone, a bit more pinky, 
but really beautiful, blends like a dream, fits so many different skin tones. Um, even Stila, the convertible colors, they don't make these palettes anymore, but they sell them individually still, which is great. Um, you can use these on the lips and the cheeks, super pigmented. They don't have a sheen to them the way that the Chanel and the NARS does. They're a little bit more of like a flat color, but the texture still looks wet, doesn't look dry on your skin. So again, these kinds of products are phenomenal for people who have a dry skin, a dehydrated skin, a mature skin, a textured skin. Um, sometimes powder clings to those areas, so this is still giving you that look you're going for, but in a more flattering texture. So just ask questions to see what works best for you. I feel like with today's look, uh, I'm going to be feeling the peachy pinky kind of tone, so I'm going to go with my NARS Liquid Orgasm. Just give it a good shake before you use it. This guy is super pigmented, so like that's probably way too much product. Um, I try to do half a pump, and half a pump is still a lot of product. So they are expensive, but I mean, they last you forever. The other good thing is that when you do work on clients, it is sanitary to pump out your product. So same thing, I'm just going in with my beauty blender and I'm just going to, I'm just blending this into that bronzer. So it's very seamless, very natural, very blended. And if I bring it up a little bit higher, it's not the end of the world. It just looks like a natural flush. You still want to make sure you're doing your primer and your setting spray so it doesn't move too much, but I find that it does sit well on the skin. So for my highlight now, I am a big believer in highlight. I live for highlight. Highlight is my bitch. Again, I have a couple of products that I really, really like. The Stila Heaven's Hue is incredible. I have like four or five different shades of them. Incredible for photo shoots and for weddings. Oh my god, cannot talk enough about them. Um, it's, it's a really weird like texture, it's a putty. It's not a cream, it's not a liquid. If you push too hard, you can see that there's like a bit of an indentation. Um, you will leave fingerprints in it. This product does not work with a brush. It has to be used with your fingers, a beauty blender or a sponge. Um, I love using my beauty blender or my fingers for it. You can use it on your face, your eyes, your body. It looks insane on the decollete and on the shoulders, um, especially in the summertime, like when you're wearing those cute little halter tops. Um, just, just bathe your body in this. You will not regret it. So the other product I also really like is the sculpting stick from Chanel. This guy is a little weird. There's two textures. There's one that's like... It just, it doesn't add, it doesn't look like anything on my skin, it just looks wet. The other one is shimmery, but this one is just like translucent. And it just, it just gives a sheen to the skin. It's absolutely incredible. It just makes you look wet, which is what I'm going for. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of my kitten as well. I'm gonna take the butt of my beauty blender at this point and just right on top. I'm gonna mix the Chanel with this Stila. That's one of my favorite combos ever. And again, I'm not swiping, I'm just bouncing. If you want to do a little bit of powder underneath your eyes or just in the T-zone just to keep your oil control or to give a little bit of extra coverage, there are no rules. You can absolutely do so. But if your skin is cooperating and you just want something light and fresh, you can absolutely leave it like so. I'm really feeling self-conscious about my forehead because this breakout is driving me mental. So I'm going to go in with my loose powder foundation, my Radiant Loose Powder Foundation from Mid by Nature. This is W2 Ivory. I showed this last time in my video, and I really like this guy. I've been using it for quite some time, and it works very well. So I'm just going to lightly brush this over my forehead. Kind of concentrating at where I have the breakouts the most. But again, the powder is not drying. It doesn't make me look decrepit and cakey. 
I also am doing a nine hour shift, so I'm just gonna add a teeny bit of bronzer just to sculpt my cheeks a smidge more because I do want it to show up at work. So this is the Physicians Formula Miru Miru Butter Bronzer in Deep Bronzer. One, two, that's all I need. Again, you don't have to do this. I'm just going to take a little bit of Hot Mama from the bomb. It's a very good dupe for orgasms, um, from Nars's orgasm. So because I use a similar tone in the cream, by doing the powder on top, it just sets it and gives it a little bit more longevity. Just ever so lightly kissing my skin with that brush, just really softly blending it in there. Like so. And then again, you can just do some powder highlight if you want to. I will always do a powder highlight. <laughs> so I'm going to go back in with my kitten from Stila. This is a fan brush from Smashbox. And just just on the highest points. I'm really going to work that in. So you can see that even though I did layer some powder products on top, they don't look cakey, they don't look heavy, they don't look super chiseled. I kept my touch light and I used textures and finishes that still are not matte. They look a little bit more dewy and luminous and rainy. I'm gonna continue with the eyes. I'm gonna be using my 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil in the shade Lucky from Urban Decay. I'm thoroughly obsessed with their eyeliner pencils. You have a little bit of play time, so you have about two minutes to smear and smudge as you see fit. But once they set, they set, and they are pretty good for lasting all day long. Um, they have really awesome funky colors that are slightly difficult to find as well, like such as this color. It's like a weird orange rustic brown. It's really beautiful, and it doesn't irritate my eyes either. I'm going to take the same brush I was using earlier with that same scorched eyeshadow, like half a drag, and I'm just going to smudge it on top. That was a good idea. The tone is everything. I'm gonna go back in with my blending brush that I was using earlier. There's nothing on it. I'm just using whatever's left on it along with the product I just applied. I'm just going to run that along my lower lash line just to soften anything, just to smooth the lines. Get that nice fade going on. I'm gonna connect it here a little bit to that upper corner portion as well just so it's nice and unified come so lovely uh, i'm gonna go in back with my definer brush from smashbox back into that kitten from stila and i'm just gonna pop this sucker right on the inner corner i'm going to work it in an upward motion and then bring it down and you can see the difference of how much it just brightens and illuminates that area. Whoops, a little bit too low. Shite. Okay, well, it's gonna be a glowy kind of concealer kind of day. I'm going with that back of the beauty blender, the, the side that has the least amount of product. I'm gonna try to buff it out. Whatever, that's the best it's gonna get. It's fine. So I need some contrast and some definition, so I'm going to take a liquid eyeliner. I'm going to be going in actually with a brown instead of a black. This one is the Roller Liner from Benefit in brown. It's a little bit more rigid, a little bit more stiff. So I feel like you just easily stamp this along the lash line and it kind of does the job for you. But So for mascara, I'm going to be using my Marc Jacobs... Velvet Primer Epic Lash Primer. I got this in an influencer box. I love this lash primer. Oh my god, it makes my lashes look so thick and good. Next, I'm going in with Their Real from Benefit. This is the brown one. So now that my eyeshadow is done, I can go in with my Gimme Brow from Benefit. Um, same thing as always, number three. I'm just gonna run this through my brows in an upward motion. Again, giving it that fluff, that 
volume, that texture, and that longevity. For my lips, I'm actually going in with the Plump Your Pucker Lip Gloss from The Bomb. I got a bunch of products from them when I was in Toronto, so thank you for that, The Bomb. And this one is in Amplify. It's a really pretty pink. Um, has a nice gold reflect to it. So this is my first time trying this shade. Let's see how it goes. Okay, it's sheer. Okay, I can't build it up too much. It is a lip gloss, not a lip lacquer. So that is the final finished look. I just decided to add some NYX Oil Huile Prodigeurs. This is the original one. They have a shimmering one and then they also have the new floral one. I love all three, but the original one is just phenomenal. You can tell I really like it because I use it all the time. And it just gives a nice sheen to the skin. It smells delicious. It has a nice Minoy undertone to it. So any fragrance with Minoy in it is going to last longer, but also give it that nice uh, beachy kind of vibe. And speaking of beachy vibes, today's fragrance is Tom Ford Eau de Soleil Blanc. I purchased this with my own money. Same with the NYX. And it just smells like vacation. I love the way that this fragrance makes me feel. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you later. Bye!